African Airways is getting its international wings back. Public Enterprises Minister Pravin Gordon will officially relaunch SAA tomorrow, two years after the airline returned from the brink of bankruptcy. As part of the relaunch, the state-owned airline will resume direct flights to Sao Paulo in Brazil. This route was one of many canned nearly four years ago during to the business rescue process. The first flights will depart from Cape Town on the 31st of October. That's next week. And from Johannesburg on the 6th of November. Let's break down the significance of this takeoff now. I'm joined by Guy Leach of SA Flyer magazine. Guy, good afternoon. I mean, good morning. Welcome to uh, Newslink. You see, I'm used to hosting in the afternoon, you know, and my, my TD Nape has been laughing at me each time I say good afternoon. It's in the morning. Hi. Thank you for joining us, Guy. You know, tell, tell us about just broadly first the significance of what's happening around SAA. Yeah. Hi, Dan. And nice to be with you on this. Good morning. The uh, significance is important, especially from the government's political point of view, because they've always viewed South Africa, South African Airways as the flag carrier. That means, you know, they want to be able to fly the flag in international destinations around the world. And it's significant that uh, they're now um, opening South America uh, simply because it is the first proper true long haul intercontinental flight. But let's not forget that they've been servicing West Africa almost since, since reopening with, with Accra in particular. Um, but the significance can't be lost. Um, they've tried hard to get these routes back. Um, and I think it's great as well that they're operating both from Johannesburg and from Cape Town because we're increasingly seeing the sort of the center, the locus, if you like, of uh, airline operations moving uh, from Johannesburg to Cape Town, particularly in response to the Western Cape's air access initiative. So SAA is following the market. That's good news. Um, it is a very limited offering at this stage, as you said in your introduction. It's only four flights a week. Um, and the reason for one, one of the reasons for that is because they just don't have the fleet the, of aircraft to service uh, any more flights than that. Yeah, I was going to think that maybe it's because of the cost of aviation fuel as well, because you know they've come out of the of the doldrums literally. I mean, I mean, does this could this signify the beginning of better days for SAA, or is it too early to call, guy? You know what they say, one summer does not, one swallow does not make a summer. I think it's too early to call. I've just asked Professor John Lamoda, the, uh, the interim CEO, what their next route will be, and his, that was his exact answer. He can't say yet, it's too early. My suspicion is that the only viable next route that they can fly will be to Perth. Uh, Qantas is already operating the, um, the Sydney route, so that, that's the one route where they won't have much uh, competition on. The real problem that they face getting back into long haul international operations is that the other airlines have properly moved into their space, eaten their lunch as it were, um, and it'll be extremely difficult for SAA to now be able to compete on uh, England, London, even um, Yatwick, um, or uh, um, Europe, particularly Germany, and um, the United States. The airlines have really moved in in a big way to um, filling the space left by SAA. And um, SAA, quite frankly, just doesn't have the, the aircraft to be able to service those fleets, those routes either. Yeah, I mean, Africa, profitability there, uh, not much. I mean, you mentioned this long haul. I mean, I think PATH makes sense. There's a lot of South Africans who've moved there and there's a big traffic and it's not being serviced a lot. So, you know, people will be traveling uh, uh, to and fro instead of going via Sydney. Absolutely. You know, one of the previous CEOs, Mr. Vianney Johanna, told me emphatically that SAA couldn't make money east of um, Dubai. And that's because the so-called uh, Middle East three super connectors, you know, the um, Emirates, um, uh, Emirates, Dubai, uh, uh, Qatar and Etihad, have really cornered the market for further east operations to, for instance, Hong Kong or Beijing or Japan. Uh, so SAA is unlikely to be able to expand in that direction. Um, Perth is the one, one route that they had where they didn't really have competition. Beyond that, I, I just don't think that they have the, the, the economy of scale or the most recent aircraft that will be able to compete on these routes. You know, they're still, in a sense, have an, an Airbus A340, um, which is a four-engine fuel guzzler. 
Um, yes, they have got um, a, a, one or two AC-30s now, which are more efficient, but they can't compete against the latest Airbus AC-50s or Boeing 777s. So SAA is going to really struggle to be able to make money on these long-haul routes. Yeah, can it make money on our continent? No, to, uh, yeah, to answer your question, it's always made money on, in, in Africa. Africa is a very inefficient market. Most of the airlines are, um, are state-owned and are protected, and therefore it's relatively easy to compete against them. And indeed, the West Africa in particular is a very ripe or open market for South Africa because, um, as you know, there is no dominant airline, there is no major airline in West Africa. Nigeria hasn't been able to produce a viable airline, and, and nor have any of the others. So SAA has had West Africa very much to itself. But um, for the rest of Africa, I'm afraid, Ethiopian has, 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 has bubbled it up, and Kenyan Airways is, is, is still doing very well as well. So I can't see SAA being able to uh, muscle in there, but it should really be making good money out of West Africa. Yeah, it is going to remain a small ally now. It won't be as big as it used to be. It just won't be as big as it used to be. The big question is how is it going to fund modern aircraft? You know, uh, the airline likes to uh, say that, well, its leases, uh, its previous bankers or lessors who provided with aircraft are still looking or happy to lend to SAA. I'm not so sure about that. Though. These lessors took a big loss, a big haircut um, when, the business, when the airline went into business rescue. I think they're going to be charging a premium for any uh, new leases to SAA. And uh, that's going to make, obviously, the airline uh, that much harder to be profitable as well. So um, I, I just don't see them having the, uh, the size or the cost structure to be able to, to, to grow much further. And therefore, they're going to have to be a small niche operator, probably just about a quarter of the size of, they were in, of, of what they were in 2019. And can they become profitable at that level? That's the million-dollar question. I, for one, believe they can be. Um, Professor Malamala and the rest of the SAA board are to be commended for uh, taking a measured approach back to the return to flying. They just haven't you know, gone out and flown the flag wherever they can get destinations. Um, it's taken them you know, two and a half years to open the, um, the Sao Paulo route. And um, they're going to continue to be slow. I, I am worried about cash flow. They had a couple of early wins early on when they managed to get back so-called blocked funds from places like Angola and Zimbabwe, and that helped their cash flow. But we saw just uh, six or seven months ago the, the airline saying that it had made 150 million rand loss um, over um, three months, if I'm not mistaken. That's, um, that is hopefully just a too short a period to draw any long-term inferences from. But nonetheless, it's worrying that the airline is not looking very profitable at this stage. From all, all, all accounts that I'm seeing, the, uh, the, the loads are, not very, are very, not very high. I've seen reports in the order of 50 to 60 percent loads, and that's not good at all. Uh, these days, an airline really can't make money with less than about a 70 to 75 percent load. And the other key variant is yield. A yield is the amount of money that each passenger pays. So it looks like it's good that they're not savagely discounting seats uh, and they're maintaining the yield. But still, yield is, is, is a very competitive market. They don't have the economies of scale to be able to compete, and they're not getting the loads. So I am very worried that the uh, promises are going to be broken and that SAA will indeed be coming back to the taxpayer sooner rather than later, either for uh, new aircraft or just to subsidize operating expenses. Thank you very much for your time and insights, as usual. Guy Leach is, of course, the editor of SA Flyer magazine, just talking to us today ahead of tomorrow's official relaunch of uh, South African Airways SAA by the Minister of Public Enterprises, Praveen Gordon, and also announcing the resumption of the route to Sao Paulo in Brazil as the first intercontinental route since SAA survived that uh, business rescue process.